But uh, let's welcome Mary An Mary O'Connell, sorry, our 3PL uh, expert from St. Louis, everybody's favorite sub subject. I always wanted to be a claims analyst and processor. Absolutely, I, I, di I did not, obviously, I'm, I'm lying. But Mary, let's talk about this subject that uh, everybody just, I mean, it's all a buzz on, on social uh, networking, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, claims is something that every freight broker and every 3PL is going to have to deal with. It's um, it's just the part of doing business. You know, you can say that, oh, well, you know, we're so good. Our carriers are so good that no damage is ever going to happen to anything. But that's that's a lie. Mistakes happen. Forklifts puncture things. Um, you name it something will happen and it will be weird and it will be bizarre. Um, but that's okay. That's why you have a claims department. That's why you have people who are trained and are specialized to know how to handle a claim and move forward with it. You know, you know, what's interesting to me is that I, I remember a, as a kid and, and, and then going into, into, into college and, and studying the fact that there were certain department stores back then that probably don't exist now, but they still do. Some of them do where they would take back anything. Right. It didn't even I mean, there were stories of like Sears and so on taking back merchandise. It wasn't even theirs. I mean, and that was like their shtick. Right. It was like we handle exceptions and claims and stuff like that better than anybody in the world. And it kind of amazes me that that's not a bigger sticking point or bigger uh, uh, marketing tool in, in these days, especially when you're looking for service that is kind of declined. You know, we always joke that shipping gets more expensive as service declines. Right. <laughs> I mean, you kind of see some of those stores with like those, um, uh, oh, what do you call it? There's like those stores that like on Wednesday, they'll get the truck and then Thursday, everything is like full price Friday. It's so much off. And every day that it goes until the truck comes again, it like goes down in price. And it's kind of one of those just like a catch all for like Amazon returns kind of. Um, so those stores do kind of exist, but not in the same way that Sears used to take back anything and everything. Um, I guess the modern day version of that would just be Harper Freight. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. But no, I mean, claims are something that are very important. Um, and I mean, you know, you, you there definitely comes a point where you need to stop talking as a freight broker and immediately move it over to your claims team. Like the second someone says, oh, this is damaged or, oh, um, I think something arrived wrong. Like, do not say anything. Do not say, oh, we'll get you taken care of. Don't worry. Just say it. That's unfortunate. I'm so sorry. I'm going to pass you over to the claims team now and just don't say anything else. It's kind of your job to be creative in these situations and be creative on the front side so that claims don't happen. And sometimes that involves working with a shipper and saying, you know what, maybe how can we package things a little bit differently? How can we kind of reassess your transportation strategy to make sure that your freight, whether it's sensitive or not, is most taken care of and most insulated from those claims. And then you also have to work on the carrier side saying, hey, you know what, maybe be a little bit more careful. Let's talk about how we're loading things and the speed at which we're doing that, right? And you are kind of that middle liaison on to stop claims before they happen. But eventually you have to get to the point where you admit defeat and you say, you know what, it happened, I can't do it. And as a broker, that's hard to do because you're trained to be tenacious and to not accept that failure, which filing claims isn't necessarily a failure, but it can feel like it sometimes, right? How do you know when you just need to pass it on out and just say, you know what, well, I'm taking this, but also make it not look ref like reflect poorly on you and your ability as a broker? I would definitely say that any time that there's damage to a product when it arrives um, at the shipper or, or with, when uh, something is damaged at the shipper or something is damaged in transit or something is damaged at the receiver, the second that someone sends you a picture and says that there's damage or an item is wrong or something has happened to affect to make that good, that load like not perfect or not a complete load, immediately hand it over to the claims team. If that's happening, if you see those happen more often, then take a step back. Um, still, anytime there's damage, hand it over to your claims team. But if you see that it's happening every time they ship, I don't know, like a chest of drawers, or I don't know, if there's some particular item that every time that they ship or certain loads, it happens, um, then start saying like, hey, can you send me pictures of your freight when you like load it, like before you close the drawers, can you send me a picture of it? Um, or uh, can you maybe just send me a video of someone loading it? Can I come out, do a site visit? And that might be more of the account manager or the salespeople responsibility. But definitely, if you see something happening over and over again, or you see like a repetitive process, just call someone and say, hey, um, like just kind of raise the flag, say, hey, I think we might have a problem here. Every time we ship something of this 
nature or of this type of item, um, something happens to it, or more often than not, we get a claim for it. And that's when you will want to um, kind of stop and see if there's something that you can do. Maybe we ship it a little different. We put some protective packaging on it to make sure that that item doesn't get damaged, or maybe we load a, that load differently just to make sure that the more fragile stuff is insulated in the middle or you name it. That's where you just got to get a little creative to make sure that um, you're protecting your your uh, shipper's goods. And Mary, we talked about carrier reputations with Grace Sharkey at the start of our show and kind of how being compliant makes a carrier's reputation, makes or makes or breaks a carrier's reputation, but also how they handle claims and how they report claims can also be part of that make or break for a carrier, carrier rep, reputation. If I can get the words out this morning. Can you touch on that a little bit as well and kind of speak to you as a carrier, how you should be handling claims and how you should be reporting things and saying, you know what, I, th I think we might've done something or some of this is my fault, but let's find a solution together and how sometimes admitting that fault can be that preservation that you need. Yeah, so nobody ever wants to admit that they've made a mistake. Nobody ever wants to take fault for the claim, but they're always going to find out who's at fault for the claim a little sooner rather than later. So I think that the biggest thing is is that if you're a carrier and you you know you think that you know a claim you know a damage has happened, you're just not sure if it happened at origin, destination, or in transit, just immediately own up to it because the first like the second somebody gets shady and start going like, oh, I don't know what happened to it. We didn't know anything. More often than not, there's security footage on um, there's security from footage on the shipper at their receiver. So if you hit something that might have shifted your trailer um, at their receiver, and you're like, I don't know, they literally have video footage of it, and you know you can you can't really say like, well, I didn't do that because someone literally saw you do it. So I think if you're just forthcoming and say, Hey, something happened, we're not sure what we'll work on it. Um, never try to hide it. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you consistently are getting claims on loads that you haul, don't necessarily like hide it, just say like, Oh yeah, like we had a lot of claims, maybe do some driver retraining, the more out ahead of it you are, the less red flags that you'll kind of put up. Cause you know how, if someone's like, Oh yeah, we have no idea what happened. And then the first time you're like okay that's weird like maybe it was just a fluke accident whatever but then the more you get into it um you'll be uh you know you'll see you'll see a pattern a pattern appear and that's when it's a bad time is when someone's like trying to hide a suspicious past yeah yeah if, if you're if you're a broker at a at a brokerage house that that doesn't have a strong professional claims uh department that takes control right from the beginning the submission of the RFP to go through all those details all the way through statistics and trends with shippers and suggestions, et cetera, then you need to go to a different broker because uh, <laughs> the brokers don't need to be doing that stuff. <laughs> you need to have the Absolutely professional. Absolutely not. Need to, the brokers need to be bringing you money. They, the other ones need to be taking care of the customers and making sure things are cool and you're not setting yourself up from failure because a lot of times that happens right at the moment the RFP is signed right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. where the issues can, can begin. And you need professionals in that claims department. So absolutely. Excellent stuff, Mary. Thank you so much. No problem, guys. Have a good day. All right. We'll talk to Mary next week. You can catch her show check call on FreightWaves TV. You can also sign up for her newsletter as well on FreightWaves.com. Right now, we're going to head back over to the wall for our next carrier update.